everyone and welcome to Reading with Mrs. Adams. I'm Mrs. Adams and today I have three books and two poems all about polar bears. And I have a little friend with me right here. His name is Passport. He's my little polar bear friend and I thought it'd be fun to have him along today as I'm introducing all of the books and the poems. Our first book today is called The Polar Bear. This is written and illustrated by Jenny Desmond. And this is about a little girl who wants to know things about a polar bear. And what does she do? She reads a book. And we're going to follow along with this little girl and discover right along with her everything she learns about polar bears. I know you're going to enjoy this lovely and very beautifully illustrated book, The Polar Bear. The Polar Bear, written and illustrated by Jenny Desmond. For very special friends, Bex, Cass, Jess, Lou, and Rob, with love. The Polar Bear, by Jenny Desmond. Enchanted Lion Books, New York. Once upon a time, a child took a book from the shelf and started to read. She read that polar bear is also called a sea bear and that this huge marine mammal spends most of its life on the ice and snow of the frozen Arctic Ocean. In the spring and autumn, the flexible sea ice can bend and give way under the polar bear's colossal weight. In the summer, there is virtually no ice to hunt across. In winter, the polar bear walks for miles over solid expanses of ice in search of food. Polar bears live at the northernmost point of the Earth in the Arctic regions of the United States, Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Norway, and Russia. In summer, the Arctic sun never sets. In winter, the sun never rises, and the only light is from the moon, stars, and green glow of the northern lights. Winter temperatures are so low that breath freezes instantly. Harsh winds Blinding snowstorms and treacherous ice form the environment in which polar bears live for many months. Yet remarkably, they maintain the same body temperature as our own. Big with heavy limbs, they have two layers of fur, a tough hide, and a thick layer of fat under their skin. Polar bears evolved to have long necks so they can keep their heads above water while swimming and reach into holes in the ice for seals. Male polar bears have stronger necks than females for fighting other bears. Males also have larger bodies, longer teeth, and broader heads. Small furry ears, dark brown eyes, blue-black tongue, 42 long sharp teeth, bad breath, long neck, long thick legs, short tail, they growl, roar, chuff, hiss, whimper, and purr, huge feet. Polar bears have huge paws that turn slightly inward. These can be up to 13 inches long, the size of a large dinner plate. While their paws are good for digging and swimming, they also act like snowshoes, spreading out the bear's weight as it moves across deep snow and fragile ice. Should the sea ice begin to bend, a polar bear will crawl on its tummy. Each paw has five sharp, strong claws and foot pads that are covered with small bumps, much like the surface of a basketball. These claws and pads allow for a strong grip on the ice.
When wet, polar bears shake water and ice out of their fur, just like dogs. The polar bear's fur has two layers, a soft, woolly undercoat and a top layer of water-repellent hairs that are oily, stiff, shiny, see-through, and hollow. A polar bear looks white in bright sunlight, but its coat is really yellow or gray, and its skin is black. Polar bears are about the same length as two seven-year-old children, top to toe. Males can be nine feet long, while females are usually no more than eight feet. An adult male might weigh a thousand pounds, which is around the same weight as 27 year olds. Adult females typically weigh half that, 500 pounds, unless they are pregnant. Then they can weigh as much as a male. A polar bear's eyesight is similar to our own, but their eyes have an extra layer that works like a pair of built-in sunglasses. This layer protects their eyes from strong arctic light and helps them to keep their eyes open underwater. A polar bear's hearing is also similar to our own, but its sense of smell, its strongest sense, is extraordinary. A bear can smell seals from several miles away and relies on scent to find a mate, detect danger, and locate its cubs. When polar bears stand up on their hind legs, it's so they can smell the air even better. Sniff, sniff. In the wild, adult bears usually live for 20 to 25 years. Solitary creatures, they spend a lot of time alone. Their main reasons for being with others are mating, raising cubs, or feeding upon large food sources, such as beached whale carcasses. In zoos where polar bears aren't subject to harsh weather conditions and don't work to find food, they can live into their 40s. Just as we can know the age of a tree from counting the rings inside its trunk, the rings inside a polar bear's tooth indicate how long it's been alive. <laughs> the best time for polar bears to hunt is in late spring when the ice starts to melt and seals can be reached more easily through the thinner ice. The polar bear's main food is the ringed seal the best time for polar bears to hunt is in the late spring when the ice starts to melt and seals can be reached more easily through the thinner ice. The polar bear's main food is the ringed seal, but it also eats bearded, harp, and hooded seals, along with the carcasses of beluga whales, walruses, norwhales, and bowhead whales. Finding food can be difficult, but polar bears don't have to eat every day. A single adult seal can satisfy a bear for up to 11 days. Only when summer arrives and the seals move out into the open water do polar bears largely lose their food supply. Then a bear might not eat for three long months as it waits for the sea ice to form again. Sniff, sniff. Ringed seal. Hooded seal. Bearded seal. Harp seal walrus, norwhale, beluga whale. Polar bears have three ways of hunting. The most common is wading by a hole or at the edge of the ice for a seal to surface. Then the bear will grab the seal with its teeth and pull it onto the ice. Another is sneaking up on a seal that is already on the ice and then running at full speed to catch it. A polar bear can run faster than the fastest human, but only for a few seconds. Finally, if a polar bear smells a seal hiding just below the ice in a birthing lair, it will rise up on its hind legs before crashing down through the ice for it.
Seals are wary creatures and faster swimmers than polar bears, so once out in the open water, they are difficult to catch. Polar bears kill only one of every 20 seals they hunt. To survive, a polar bear needs to eat about 40 ringed seals a year. Bears always eat the fat and skin first, since those provide the most energy. They also get their water from the seal's fat, since sea ice is too salty to drink. A polar bear's face is usually stained with blood after eating, but since bears are fussy about cleanliness, they always wash when they have finished. A bear will either wash its paws and nose in a nearby pool or roll around on the ice, rubbing its paws and face in the snow. Polar bears like to roam on sea ice where there are lots of water channels, cracks, and pools as these make seals easier to catch. Throughout the year, a bear will stay within an area of ice that is usually hundreds of miles across. That is called its home range. Here, ice constantly moves, breaking and shifting with the sea. These sheets of floating ice are called ice flows. As ice flows break apart, they can move quickly, carrying a bear far from its home range. But since adult bears have an excellent sense of direction and are strong long distance swimmers, they are able to find their way home. Their fat and the hollow hairs of their coat help them to float. Their rounded front paws give them a powerful doggy paddle and their back legs help them to steer. Polar bears can hold their breath underwater for around two minutes. In the spring during mating season, a male will follow the scent of a female until he finds her. The bears will then mate, after which the male will often have savage battles with other males to keep her. After two weeks, the male polar bear will depart, scarred from the bloody fighting. After mating in the spring, a female will only finally become pregnant in the autumn, if she has enough stored fat to support a pregnancy. She therefore will spend all spring and summer eating. If she is underweight in the autumn, then she won't become pregnant and will continue to hunt throughout the winter. Female polar bears dig birthing dens in sloping snow or peat banks to provide a warm, sheltered place for their cubs. Once inside, the female won't eat for many months. Her cubs, usually born in pairs in December, will stay with her in the den until spring. At birth, cubs are pink, the size of a guinea pig, and covered in soft, fine fur. Their eyes remain tightly closed for their first month. Bear cubs feed on their mother's rich fatty milk and gain weight quickly. After three months, when they are strong enough, the family will travel to the sea ice so the mother can hunt for food. Cubs spend a lot of time playing, chasing, wrestling, and sliding down small hills. They also watch and copy their mother who trains them to lie still while she hunts. They sometimes become boisterous all the same and can scare the prey away. Cubs leave their mother after three years, but have yet to become good hunters, so they have to rely on scavenging until their skills improve. Polar bears do not hibernate. They like to sleep though, and can sleep almost anywhere at any time. Like humans, polar bears sleep in different positions. On warm days, they might stretch out on their back with their feet in the air, or lie down on their stomach. On cold, stormy days, they curl up with a paw over their snout for warmth, letting the snow cover them like a blanket. Most bears sleep a lot, when there isn't much food or during bad weather. 
In areas where the ice melts completely in the summer, a polar bear may spend nearly half its time asleep. Since it's hard to find food without sea ice, it makes sense to save energy and rest. Just like bears, people also curl up in cozy places, perhaps to fall asleep over a favorite book and begin to dream. And that is the end of The Polar Bear. Written and illustrated by Jenny Desmond. The first poem I'm reading today is called Polar Bears. Polar Bears. Polar bears are born with fur. They're white from head to toe. The fur is warm and helps them hide because it looks like snow. Polar bears are big and strong. In fights, they can't be beat. The fearless mother guards her cubs and brings them seals to eat. The next book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called Polar Bears. This is written and illustrated with photographs by Mark Newman. This is informational text, so it's nonfiction and filled with amazing facts about polar bears. Now, Mark Newman is a renowned wildlife photographer, and his photographs in this book are as amazing as the text. And I know you're going to enjoy Polar Bears. Polar Bears, written and illustrated with photographs by Mark Newman. Polar Bears. Polar Bears, written and illustrated with photographs by Mark Newman, Henry Holt and Company, New York. To my mother and father, Estelle and Harry. Polar bears are big. The polar bear is the biggest bear in the world. They're even bigger than the Kodiak brown bear. A giant male polar bear can weigh 1,700 pounds. That's about as heavy as a small car. Females usually weigh less than males. One polar bear was said to weigh 2,200 pounds. That's more than a ton of bear. Polar bears are tiny. Polar bears weigh only one pound at birth. They will grow to 30 times their birth weight by the time they leave the den. A mother polar bear is not able to eat while she nurses her babies from January to April. By then, mother polar bears are very hungry. Polar bears are twins. Most polar bear mothers give birth to twins. Although polar bears usually do not hibernate, expectant mother polar bears do. Mating occurs in mid-spring and females dig a den into a snowdrift in the fall. Babies are born inside the den in early January. The den is cozy, staying 40 degrees warmer than the frigid Arctic air outside. Polar bears struggle. Baby polar bears will stay with their mother for over two years as she teaches them all the skills they will need to make it into adulthood. But being a baby bear is not easy. Three out of four do not survive to see their third birthday. Polar bears live in the Arctic. Polar bears live only in the north. Unlike penguins, they do not live in the Antarctic. Penguins and polar bears never get to meet in the wild. Polar bears live in only five countries, all of which surround the North Pole. Russia, Canada, the United States, specifically Alaska, Norway, and Greenland. So up here is the North Pole. And these are the countries. This is a, a picture of the world 
from the top looking down. And as you see, here's Canada. And Alaska is this, is this state in the United States. So United States is all down in here. And this is Alaska here. So Alaska does border um, the Arctic region. And Canada does, as well as Greenland and Norway. So Europe, the continent of Europe, and Russia. Russia has probably um, has a very large um, border along the Arctic. Polar bears are not really white. Despite what they look like and what most people think, polar bears are black, not white. Under all that warm, thick fur, their skin is totally dark. The fur itself is made up of clear, hollow hairs, sort of like hollow tubes that contain no color whatsoever. The bears look like they are white only because their clear hair reflects the light. Polar bears are patient. Polar bears are very patient hunters. Their main diet is the ringed seal, which is the most numerous seal in the Arctic. They can smell a seal's breathing hole in the ice. Then they wait silently until the seal surfaces at that particular hole. This can take a very long time, since each seal has 10 or even 15 different holes to choose from. Sooner or later, the seal returns and the giant bear grabs him. Polar bears are hungry. Polar bears like to eat only the blubber and skin of the seal and usually leave the meat, which is in turn scavenged by Arctic foxes. A bear can eat 100 pounds of seal fat at a single sitting. Polar bears need to catch about one seal a week in order to stay strong and healthy. When the opportunity presents itself, which is rarely, polar bears will even hunt walruses and beluga whales. Polar bears are tough. Polar bears are masters when it comes to enduring blizzards and cold weather. They have lots of warm fur, even on the bottoms of their feet. But equally important is their four inch layer of blubber. With this combination of fur and blubber, almost no heat escapes from their body even when the Arctic temperature drops to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. A polar bear's body temperature stays at a steady 98.6 degrees, the same as ours. Their compact ears and very short tail further prevent heat loss. Polar bears are fast. No other four-legged animal can swim as fast as the polar bear. They swim at a rate of six miles per hour. That's quite a bit faster than they generally walk. They can do this because of their dinner plate size front paws, which are webbed and work like paddles. They use their hind legs only to steer. Their great swimming ability gives them their Latin name, Ursus Maritimus, which means sea bear. They are also good divers and can see well underwater. Polar bears are few. Altogether, there are only 20,000 to 25,000 polar bears in the world. These are separated into 19 groupings, which are called subpopulations. Most polar bears, about 15,000, live in Canadian territory. About 4,000 live in northern Alaska in two separate groups. There are no polar bears in the middle or southern part of Alaska. Polar bears are endangered. For tens of thousands of years, polar bears were the undisputed rulers of the north but now their existence is in jeopardy. 
Climate change is their single greatest threat. When the sea ice breaks up and melts earlier and earlier each spring, the bears find it increasingly difficult or impossible to catch seals. The result has been that in certain regions, fewer baby bears are surviving since their mothers are not as well nourished. Pollution and the disturbance caused by northern oil rigs and exploration for oil are additional threats. The United States Department of the Interior declared the polar bear a threatened species, the first animal added to the endangered species list because of global warming. And that is the end of this beautiful book by Mark Newman. Polar Bears. The second and final poem I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called The Polar Bear. And I wrote it. I hope you enjoy it. The Polar Bear by Robin Adams. The polar bear is a mighty beast. The ringed seal is its favorite feast. It smells a seal three miles away. By the breathing hole, it will patiently stay. It sneaks up quietly on tippy toes, and with its paw, it covers its nose. In one fell swoop, it dives in to attack. Then on the ice, it enjoys its snack. The third and final book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called The Three Snow Bears. This is written and beautifully illustrated by Jan Brett. It's a clever and unique twist on the classic fairy tale Goldilocks and the Three Bears. But instead of being set in the woods or in a forest, the setting for this tale is in the Arctic. So of course the bears are polar bears. And instead of the little girl having golden hair, she's a little Inuit girl, a native to the Arctic, and her name is Aluki. Now, I want you to pay close attention, as I've mentioned before in Jan Brett's illustrations, um, to the side panels because they're going to give you additional information uh, about what's going on in the story. So there's the main part of the story in the middle, but on the side panels, you're going to be able to look at those and you'll discover what's going on sort of behind the scenes or simultaneously to the main action of the story. So I know you're going to enjoy this wonderful story, The Three Snow Bears, by Jan Brett. The Three Snow Bears, written and illustrated by Jan Brett. The Three Snow Bears, Written and illustrated by Jan Brett, G.P. Putnam Sons. For Katie, with thanks to the Brookfield Zoo. Come back, Aluki shouted as her huskies floated out to sea. Oh no! She knew that although an ice floe is a good place to fish, it is a bad place to lose a dog team. Not far away, a snow bear family had just started to eat their breakfast. But it was way too hot for baby bear. Owie, yelled baby bear. My breakfast burned my mouth. We'll go for a stroll and let the soup cool, Mama Bear said. Aluki was running along looking for her dogs when she came upon the biggest igloo she had ever seen. Who lives here? She wondered. Aluki ducked inside. Right away, she smelled something delicious. Across the room, she saw a big bowl, a middle-sized bowl, and a small bowl. Surely the good smell was coming from the three bowls. A 
Aluki took a sip from the biggest bowl. Ow! She cried out. Too hot. She took a sip from the middle-sized bowl. Ooh! Too cold. She tipped up the littlest bowl and drank every drop. Mmm! She said, not too hot and not too cold. In the next room, Aluki spotted three pairs of beautiful boots standing in a row. She put on the biggest boot. Too big, she said. She put on the middle-sized boot. Too fancy, she said. She put on the littlest pair. Just right, she said, wiggling her toes in the soft fur lining. Aluki walked into the last room and found a long sleeping bench piled high with fur covers. Heat from an oil lamp warmed her cheeks and made her sleepy. Time for a nap, she thought. She crawled under the highest mound of covers. Too lumpy, she grumbled. She tried the middle bed with the furry fringe cover, but sank down so far that she could hardly breathe. Too soft, she said. She rolled over into the smallest sleeping place. The furry blanket was cozy and warm and the pillow was just her size. Just right, Aluki murmured and was asleep before she could take her boots off. If Aluki hadn't fallen fast asleep, she might have heard her dogs barking happily. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear had spotted them adrift in the strong current and gone out to save them. The Snow Bear family was pushing Aluki's dog team back toward their igloo for safety. Papa Bear crawled into the igloo and saw his big bowl sitting in a pool of spilled soup. Someone has been tasting my soup, he roared. Mama Bear rushed in and saw that her soup had been sloshed around too. Someone has been sipping my soup, she growled. Someone found my soup, sputtered Baby Bear in her high squeaky voice, and they ate it all up. Papa Bear ran into the next room and saw his boots in the middle of the floor. Someone has been trying on my boots, he boomed in his big bear voice. Mama Bear put on her fancy boots. Someone has had these boots on, she huffed and the fur is all bunched up. Baby Bear saw that her boots had disappeared. Someone has taken my boots and left behind these not-so-good ones, she wailed. The bears ran into their bedroom. Someone has been sleeping in my bed, Papa Bear bellowed. Someone has been sleeping in my bed too, Mama Bear cried. Baby Bear peeked at her little bed and squeaked, Someone has been sleeping in my bed and here she is. Aluki opened her eyes and saw three bear noses only inches away. She hopped out of bed and dove between Papa Bear's huge furry legs. Quicker than a seal, Aluki ran from room to room until she burst outside. Her huskies bounced around barking and smiling their doggy grins.
Aluki and her dogs flew over the frozen ice, dodging ridges and cracks. She looked back to wave a thank you to the snow bears. She couldn't see them, but she heard a big gruff voice, a middle-sized voice, and a high squeaky voice calling to her. Goodbye. 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 And that is the end of The Three Snow Bears, written and illustrated by Jan Brett. Passport and I have loved having you with us today, and I hope you've enjoyed all the stories and poems about polar bears. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, you can do so. Just tap the word subscribe right there, and that way you'll be sure to get all the latest videos with stories and poems from Reading with Mrs. Adams. One truth I want you always to remember, boys and girls, and that is that you are important to God, and He loves you so much. So dare to dream the impossible, because all things are possible with God. I love you. Until next time, boys and girls, goodbye.